Hello, my witchlets. Today we are going to talk about portable altars because um, I use them. I know uh, some other witchy friends I have use them. So I'm just gonna go over how to do them in kind of a basic way. Uh, this is actually the one that I use. Um, I take it with me, it's in my, it's usually in my purse or in my back pocket, depending on what I'm doing, um, luggage, whatever. Um, there are some changes that I would like to make to this one. I just haven't had a chance to do it just yet because I haven't really needed to take it into a hotel room where they don't like smoke uh, too frequently. I've, I've done it a couple of times, but just don't tell the hotels that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go over what you can put in here and just different ways of putting everything together. Um, you'll notice I have another cell phone sitting here on the table and that's because it's actually gonna come in very handy when it comes time to actually use your altar. So um, you can use any kind of a, a tin that you want. I just, uh, I bought a package of um, Altoid, uh, Altoid type tins um, a while back and uh, Obviously they're plain, so you can decorate them however you want. Uh, just be aware that paint will chip off of it. Um, mine is rather beat up from use and having it in my in my purse and everything. So, um, but you just, you just need something small like this. And um, what you are gonna do, there are many different things you can do, first of all. Um, one of the things you can do, so, I have two, for some reason, black and white pictures. My printer just decided to stop printing in color for some reason, I don't know why. Um, I have these two things, they're way too big for my purposes here. But um, these are, um, this is a very poorly rendered, because I'm not very good at cropping things. This is um, supposed to be a circle with all of the names of God written in Hebrew. Since I do a blended faith of Christianity and paganism, um, I serve Yahweh primarily, Jehovah, God, whatever you'd like to call him. I occasionally call him Odin as well. Um, and then this is um, Hestia, who is my goddess deity. And um, you can print off pictures or images or whatever, something that represents your deity, and you can put them inside your altar box. My goal is to actually print them and have one on this side and one over here on this side, so that when I set up my altar, I can set this up and I will have both, um, both deities displayed for the duration of time that, I was going, that I'm going to have my altar set up, like in a hotel room or something like that. So let me show you what I have in my altar kit here. Um, it's very messy on the inside. I have a mini layer. Um, you can get a pack of these at like Walgreens or something like that, maybe even CVS. I got these at Walgreens specifically. Um, then I have a small bell for chasing out the spirits or whatever. I don't use this all the time, but in a place where I can't sage, this is what I do, and I do it the same way I would sage. I have my representations of the um, elements. I have a uh, quartz, small quartz for earth. I've got a couple seashells for water. I've got a tea light for fire, and I have incense, an incense cone, if you, oops, forget you can't see, an incense cone and um, stone for, uh, for representing air. Now, what I'd like to switch this out to is actually a feather for air rather than incense because some places really don't want you burning um, anything that has a strong scent like this does. Um, I personally use myrrh or frankincense in my altar, uh, portable altar kit for the incense. So, um, and it's kind of strong. So, um, like I said, I'd like to uh, get some simple feathers 
to put in here instead. Um, so if we were going to build an altar now, I don't have, um, I don't know where I put the rest of my seashells. So in this particular box, we can put a small uh, gemstone. I don't remember which one this is. We can put a small gemstone for a representation of earth. You can use a rock, just like a simple rock. You can use um, a twig, a little tiny little grassy thing, whatever, whatever is going to identify earth for you. You can put that into your altar box. You just want it to be small enough. Um, you'll want probably a tea light or something else that represents fire. Um, I believe, um, I believe a dagger is something that people use. If you have like a small knife, you could use like, a um, the monopoly or not Monopoly, um, Clue Dagger. You could use the Clue Dagger. Um, then you'll want something to represent water. Uh, so you could get like a small cup and you can put water in it or you can get seashells. Seashells are easy. Um, and you can put those in there. And then you'll want something for air. Now, like I said, I tend to use frankincense cones. Um, these are nice as well, but they are kind of fragile so they break apart but these are small instant incense sticks um, they and this comes with a, a stand for them to burn in but it is an entire the entire length of this is incense so it will burn all the way all the way to the um, to the holder um, of course, for air, you can also use a, a small wand if you can fit a small wand in here, or you can use feathers. Feathers is probably easier. And then if you want, you can put um, some kind of bell in here that you can use to um, purify the energies if you're in a hotel room or something like that and you don't really want to feel like something creepy is staring at you all night, which is usually why I'm, I'm doing this in the first place. So. Um, those are just some ideas to use to put into your altar. Now, um, I'm going to move these out of my way here because I want to show you how I go about doing things. Um, so the order of things is a bit important. I'm not going to light everything um, because I only have so much of my incense remaining. Um, Actually, I take that back. I will light some incense because I do want to burn some incense, but I'm going to go get some Nag Champa. So I will be right back. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so when you are preparing to set up your altar, um, I need to move it back to me. Okay. When you're getting ready to set up your altar, there, there are specific, there is a specific order in which you need to arrange your items, which is why this phone comes in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and try to remember how to start this one. So I use a uh, compass app on my phone to find north because I am directionally challenged. So I know that south is roughly diagonal from where I'm sitting. North is back this way, like towards my, my um, back door here. Um, so what you do then is you set this so that fire is to the south. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and light this. Don't light things the way I do. I burn myself all the time. Safety first. Fires to the south. Earth is to the north. I said that backwards. Fire is to the north. Earth is to the south. Air is to the east. And water is to the west. Oops. Hmm, I might be running out of juice. There we go. I'm gonna light my cone. Okay. 
Now I have my altar set up. So what you would do is you can use your bell to purify the area before you start, or like before you start setting up, you can do it after you've set up, you can do it before you've cast your magic circle, after you've cast your magic circle, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna tell you how I cast a magic circle and um, explain what it is and all of that. So you're kind of getting a two for here in this video. You're getting how to make your own portable altar and you're getting a little information about magic circles. So a magic circle is just a circle in which you extend your energy, you call upon the energy of other entities to assist you in whatever spell work that you're going to do. I don't normally always cast a magic circle when I'm doing stuff. Like if I'm cooking out here, I'm not gonna cast a magic circle to um, you know, help me cook. Um, I don't, I don't need to, it's just, you know, I can use my own energies and I'm fine. Um, I have my kitchen altar over there. It's really simple. Um, so it's not like I need anything other than what I have already in this space. If I'm doing specific spell work, however, or if it's coming close to specific sabbats like Beltane or Sewing, I will cast a magic circle for anything that I do that is in, that's going to involve um, magic or spiritual practice or something like that because the veil is so thin at those particular times of year and I am very, very, very susceptible. Um, I, <laughs> I had an incident where uh, I had, I, I did a, a channeling that I was not prepared for because the deceased person didn't know that they needed to have consent. They had a message they wanted to deliver. They found that I was receptive and boop, there it went. And uh, that actually made me very ill and um, scared the person I was giving the message to, scared me a bit, but everything's fine. So um, because I'm so susceptible, I tend to cast magic circles specifically at those times when I'm going to be doing any kind of spell work or uh, house purifications or energy purifications or anything like that. So enough of all of that. Magic circle is good if you are not confident in yourself and you just want that extra protection. It's good for uh, specific spell work because you're bringing in energies that could assist you with certain types of spells. Um, if you just want to have that added benefit of protection, it's good for that. So the way I cast a magic circle, um, hang on, I need to reframe this because I do need to stand. Okay, so when I cast a magic circle, I don't use wands or anything like that. Um, I mentioned that in a previous video. I just use my own energy and direct my focus. So the first thing you need to do is you need to center yourself and you need to be prepared for inviting in everything that you are going to invite into your space. And you're going to start in the south and then you're going to work your way around your circle. And this is what I do. Guardians of the south of the earth, I call upon you. Guardians of the West of water, I call upon you. Guardians of the South of fire, I call upon you. Guardians of the East of air, I call upon you. Goddess of Earth, Hestia, I call upon you. God of the Heavens, Jehovah, I call upon you. Merry meet and blessed be. The circle is cast. Let us begin our work. And now that I have those protections and those energies, my circle is whole. You can start at the south, you can start at the north, just remember which one you start at because you go in reverse 
when you shut off your circle for lack of a better term. I usually say closed, but the circle is actually never closed. Um, it's just this particular moment is over and I thank you for coming. So I've cast my magic circle. I have my guardians here. I have the attention of my goddess and my god. You do not have to name deities. If you don't serve a particular deity, you are, you know, an earthbound kind of practitioner, atheist, whatever. Um, you just call upon Mother Earth, Father Sky. Um, you don't have to name specifics. I do because of how I practice. This is my personal, this is my personal circle. Um, so then you would do your spell work or whatever work you're wanting to do within, you don't have to be within the circle. Cause I mean, this circle, it extends out for me because I've, I have indicated that my entire dwelling is under protection. So if cameraman Ken is in the bedroom working on something in Minecraft, he is protected from whatever it is I'm doing out here. Um, so my house, entirely my house, is under protection, not just this small little area. In a hotel room, the entire room is under protection, not just the small little area where my altar is. So you can extend your protections, your circle, as far out as you want to go that you can manage. You want to make sure that you can manage your energy in those um, in that in that range of circle. Um, again, this particular thing is going to be very important at sewing for um, doing any of the rituals that I may or may not video for you. You want a magic circle, especially if you're a sensitive like I am. So you do your spell work, and then it's time to to close the circle that you have immediately going. Um, again. These entities are always present. They're always ready to assist. This is like summoning them. It's like a meeting, you know? It's like, we're gonna close this meeting, but we can meet again, kind of thing. So this is how I close the circle. I started in the south, so now I start, or I'm sorry, I started in the, yes, I started in the south, now I start in the north. Again, you want to ground and center, especially since you've done your spell work and you've expended a lot of energy. <clears throat> Guardians of the North, of fire, you were here and I thank you. Guardians of the West, of water, you were here and I thank you. Guardians of the South, of earth, you were here and I thank you. Guardians of the East, of air, you were here, and I thank you. Goddess of Earth, Hestia, you were here, and I thank you. God of the Heavens, Jehovah, you were here, and I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. The circle is closed. And at this point, if you still have a candle burning, you can blow that out. I just let the incense burn out and do its thing. And uh, go from there. So that is how you put together a portable altar. There's so many different things that you can do. You can, again, for you don't have to use rocks for earth. You can use twigs, you know, leaves, something that for you symbolizes earth. Um, and that's really the important part of your altar. It's what symbolizes everything to you. Um, some, I know that there are some practices that insist that it's a north, south, east, west, plus god and goddess kind of a thing in the altar, and that's fine. That if that is how you choose to do your altar, that is how you choose to do your altar. There is no right way and no wrong way to practice. Um, 
you just have to know what you are comfortable with and what your limits are and what your limitations are and then blow past those limitations because really we are beings of power and we can affect change in this universe. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, you know, if you did hit that thumbs up button, if you didn't go ahead and smash the dislike button, leave me a comment either way. It really does help my algorithm. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed and that you ring the notification bell so that you know when my new videos are coming out. We'll see you next time.